Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's not only a VR wraith. Right. It's not only, we are not trying to imitate a real wraith. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give the whole experience of how to show of, of how a typical Berlin night is going. Right. Yeah. What's happening during a typical Berlin night yeah. as authentic as it could get. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. It's, it's not it's not supposed to be just wraith. It's supposed to be a new level of, of entertainment. Right. It's like like a Netflix series, but through the VR aspect, it's like you're watching the series as the main character for mm -hmm. the first time and you see what the main character is seeing. Yeah. That's that's kind of the idea. Mm -hmm. That's how we came up. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. It's almost like a, a an adventure. Yeah. You know, like from starting the night from the call, where is this raid to we have to find it and then we finally get there. So will each episode then be a completely new uh, experience or let's say or raid? I think yeah, I would say like yes, each episode is a completely new experience, uh -huh. but the first episodes we will launch will like take place in one night. Mm -hmm. So right now what we did with the first episode, um, which is called Orphan Sound, uh -huh. where we also like um, designed the t-shirts right. for, um, is, is taking like one part mm -hmm. of a whole night. So the night will continue. I see. Okay. And there will be more stuff coming. Maybe it will also get more extreme. Mm -hmm. And yes, Maybe. it will be uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so this first episode is actually kind of just the beginning of the night. I mean, totally. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. We used it as a, you could say, a testing phase, a pilot phase. Mm -hmm. We really had to try things out. Right. Now we will reevaluate what the customers really want to see mm -hmm. and the, the, the rivers. Yeah. And, um, but we have so many good ideas. <laughs> <about that. laughs> I mean, the, the interesting thing about this is there is not that we could look into YouTube and check, okay, what did other people do? Right, yeah. Because there is no comparison, there is not even um, a movie, like a real movie or a series in virtual reality that we compare, could compare mm -hmm. or um, interlinked with. Yeah. So we had, like, we just started with something and now we have to find out mm -hmm. what do the people really want. What do they want? Yeah, exactly. 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 Feedback. You need a lot of feedback. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So your feedback is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's feedback. <laughs> and so the first episode, tell us a little bit about um, the first, the first edition with the DJ, the DJ, any of the artists involved. Yes, exactly. Uh, Kalish is the DJ. She yes. Good friend. That would be Kalish. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's nothing. I mean, sorry. We. What we are trying as well, what you cannot forget is that we would we were trying to give everyone in the scene, as much people as possible, and it will be more in the future, as much people as possible, first of all, the, the experience, the right. chance to be part of the series, uh -huh. to see themselves as the regular they are, right. and most importantly, to give artists and DJs, I mean DJs are artists, but uh -huh. to give artists the chance to to, to perform in times where they there are not many chances. Right. Yeah. Uh, this was it. So for the next episode, we would love to have like twenty DJs playing. Was <laughs> enough. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we would love it. But the problem is, I mean, the episode is just like will be like the first one about forty minutes. Right. So it's kind of a tricky situation. But we want to get as much breakers, as much DJs. Playing themselves, also as much friends, as much okay, friends, right, right, right. And anyone can, like hypothetically, be in the uh, exactly. series, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could yeah. pick some guys up, some girls. Uh -huh. up. I mean, yeah. everyone who is like, um, who is who is playing themselves. Everyone mm -hmm. in Interlink is really playing themselves. There so there are, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. like, there are no actors. It's real, real people from mm -hmm. the real scene who um, just be themselves, okay. and the only difference is we have a camera on the head. Right, right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do you think, I mean, I can't think of any, like you were saying, other VR rave that exists. Well, tech, there are a lot of companies trying to, uh, trying to get the raving experience mm -hmm. that everybody's missing so much. Uh -huh. um, so there will, there are currently, uh, there, there are some, VR raves, mm -hmm. literally 
virtual reality verse, which means that you you are creating an avatar, right? Okay. Going as going onto the rave in the rave as an avatar, right? But that's something. I mean, I, I, I mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. That's something we wanted to distance from mm -hmm. because I mean, I don't want to sound it. It. it, it, it I, I, it's, it's hard to say. I just no, no. We it's not respect it. Of course, respect it, of course. But it's just not our intention. Our right. intention is not to to have a new kind of rave that will be the real rave in, fu in the future. So that in the future you don't even have to leave your leave your home. Mm -hmm. you just put on your VR glasses, meet your virtual friends, drink virtual drinks, yeah. wear virtual clothing. Right. That's just not what we wanted. We still <laughs> hope. <laughs> that there will be regular graves again yeah. as soon as possible. It's just like entertainment. Mm -hmm. The new level of entertainment. It's not a substitute. Exactly. It's not a yeah. Exactly. Absolutely not. Yeah. This is just another part of arm of the culture. Of exactly. Yeah. 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 And um, talk about maybe a little bit uh, of uh, do you think VR will have a bigger and bigger place in our society in general as we move? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean. We hear it from the media, like the big players, Apple, Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're spending so much money in research, developing mm -hmm. uh, new kinds of VR headsets, VR glasses. Right. Um, this, this is really evolving super fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're expecting the, these Apple glasses, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in the next two, two years. Yeah. And yes. Yes. this mm -hmm. will open a new world. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say, I've, I've actually never done the put your phone into a headset yeah. Yeah, ever before trying to enter LinkedIn. I was actually shocked how realistic <laughs> it was. I wasn't sure like what the experience would be like, but just from sliding your phone in and yeah. wearing this thing on your head, but I was actually pleasantly surprised how like real it, it still felt. You know? yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it was a tricky, tricky decision because we know that the glasses are the solution. Putting your your, your smartphone into, into the glasses, yeah. putting on the glasses, is not as perfect as the super high expensive Oculus experience mm -hmm. may may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But we knew that if we want to sell, if we want to really enable everyone right. to quickly watch the episode yeah. and not invest like six to seven hundred euros right. to get the Oculus the proper proper mm -hmm. VR glasses. We needed something else. <laughs> yeah, something else. And um, the fastest way to enable our customers to really watch the episode is if we provide the, the, provide the let's say, a little less expensive version of the right. VR glasses. Are you interested in maybe developing hardware in the future? Yeah, knows, I mean, yeah. Who knows? In the future, who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Like, it could also be that like, um, like this high tech VR headsets will be affordable. Uh huh. If the also competition be, um, will be bigger and more places in the market, mm -hmm. so we can just focus on producing amazing VR content. Right. But yeah. it's not we have to find a solution. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so now we're over a year without raves, uh, legal raves, I guess <laughs> I should say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, do you think when things finally open back up, we'll see a raving party renaissance? that we've never seen before in our time? Do you think it's people are building up now and it will be something totally new? I think that there will definitely like be kind of a renaissance in the place, definitely. Yeah. The first thing that will definitely happen is that people will party more than they did before. <laughs> yeah. Because there is a lot, really a lot to catch up with. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we kind of experienced it already last summer where right. there were like some open areas yeah. and a lot of people went partying really a lot. Right. And they went out three times a weekend. They told me like, I spent so much money just for entry, yeah. which I never did even before Corona. Exactly. So I think the people now, they value raves and partying and be together with friends, mm -hmm. going out, right. free drinking. They value it way more than they did before mm -hmm. because I also can imagine like uh, or remember us before Corona, we were kind of saturated by rain. 
use at right. some point. Absolutely. So we were like, oh, I don't, I check the line up. You take it for granted. Yes, yes, yes. 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 take it for granted. Yes. And um, we were like, uh, no, we don't want to go all this weekend. The line up is not good enough. <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> <It's not good. laughs> People really well, you know, want to raise art and how it brings together people, how you can like be yourself for 20 hours or how long exactly. you want. And this is like a really high value that it has for people um, that is not there at the moment. And a lot of people miss it. I think it's including us also. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think when Corona is really like over, I mean, of course, there will not be a sharp cut right. where they say, okay, now everything is open yeah. just as normal. Exactly. But when there, is, when there will be rates again, I think people will go definitely go hard. Yeah. Yeah. They will do more. Yes, yes. Yeah. There are no excuses. <laughs> yes. I I One day is off. <laughs> Like 
what happened here is like the basically like kind of the birth of techno right. and um, yeah we definitely think that even after Corona there Berlin will be the techno capital but of course we also see that there are interesting movements especially happening in the east of Europe right like um, Kiev for example and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, a lot of DJs are like even moved to Kiev okay right. um, a lot of friends of us People we know, they mm -hmm. fly to Kiev nearly every weekend wow. just um, to go partying there. They've been having parties now. Yes, wow. yes, and it's like the Berlin in the 90s or 80s, like, pe like queer people are not really um, accepted, mm -hmm. uh, they're like un underground. Right. And I think there is a really strong scene coming up in Kiev. Yeah, yeah. And Definitely, Kiev is on a program for the next few years. Cool. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting thing that Berlin was like that. It felt feels maybe in the nineties. Exactly. Whatever. But I think in general, we've seen the last couple of years just even the sort of rave culture has had a big resurgence. You yeah. know, like nineties, let's say, influence culture uh, has been big. Uh, is that something that has always been resonating with you guys, or the 90s, old school, I mean, kind of <laughs> for yeah. so mm -hmm. definitely, definitely, yeah. like, I think we kind of, like, we grew up with, I think it was, like, the first experience we had with techno when we were, like, 14 or 15, mm -hmm. and in, in our age, when we were this old, uh, I think we were, like, really into this, also, Schranz music, right, you right, know, right. like, Chris Leaving, CDJ, yeah. back in the old days, this was, like, this hard techno, and I, I still remember the first time, I don't know which club it was, but, um, we were, like, 15, and, of course, we couldn't go to any clubs, but we already <laughs> saw them, like, you know, playing, yeah. and we heard about it. So we faked our IDs, mm -hmm. like to make us look 18, <laughs> and we went to a, um, a set of Chris Liebling. Okay. And it was like one of, I think it was like the birth of techno in our hearts, like mm -hmm. right, yeah. um, to to see Chris Liebling playing and this intense set, and mm -hmm. like we grew up with like 140, 50 BPM, okay. and we also had uh, like we had this kind of. On the dome background, like we were listening to a lot of gamma music. <laughs> we went to a lot of um, hardcore festivals in the yeah. Netherlands, yeah. and we did like put this whole gamma scene and everything that influenced us also. And I think it also influenced the music we like, right? Um, and also like a lot of ads we were doing or like videos we are posting. We had like a lot of um, gamma music in the background, yeah. like one hundred and sixty. BPM upwards, mm -hmm. um, which, which is like really, um, uh, we, are, we really love this kind of music. Right. And I also believe that this 90s techno, especially also trans, mm -hmm. um, GABA, I think it is slowly coming back. It's yeah, getting yeah. more attention yeah. again. Yeah. And we are super happy about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that this will be back in. Everyone can be for sure that when Corona is over, <laughs> we will host a GABA party. <laughs> yeah. The hardest GABA party yeah. that, yeah. that will make you else bleed. <laughs> I, I promise, I promise. <laughs> well, I want you guys to do that then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good attitude to have actually, because sometimes when things come, some music genres come back and maybe you were into it 10 years ago, you're like, uh, you know, like yeah, these kids are. That's not cool anymore. But yeah. um, I think you always. It's, that's any type of music just works in cycles. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And mm -hmm. of course, you kind of have to. You go with the flow. Yeah. So of course, if we go party, we listen to a lot of techno uh -huh. uh, because there's also not really another option. Right. Because I think before Corona, there was not the option that I could say, okay, let's go to a trans party tonight, right. let's go to a cover party tonight. Mostly it was, let's go to a techno party. Yeah. Yeah. And this was, yeah, of course you go with the flow, mm -hmm. you're getting more involved into techno, into techno um, but at some point you still um, remember right. with what you started, yeah. who you came yeah. up with, and I think you never get uh, 
that muscle is. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, actually. In Berlin, maybe it was too much techno. And it's like, yes. just that sense of, we needed maybe more trance party, yes. or gather parties, and maybe more sound. More, yes, more separation, yeah, because yeah. The, the thing is, in the, in the techno scene, um, a lot of people are really, I mean, they, they want to be, they want to be united, like yeah. all, you know, all kind of music, mm -hmm. but as soon as it goes to a hard or, or, or yeah. also yeah. the opposite, too slow, they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. like this music. <laughs> and the, at, at that point, suddenly they're not that united anymore, you know? And it's not like we love all, everyone. Yeah. And this is, um, yeah, and it's a really interesting mm -hmm. fact. And we also kind of get caught into this, that we wanted to listen to harder and harder yeah. and harder music again. And this, but this was also in the same moment something that came up with Corona because I think Corona gave the opportunity for a lot of young artists to perform at parties that were organized by people who are not the big organizers in the techno scene. Right. So they, they let um, smaller DJs play and they played their more experimental songs, mm -hmm. they used a lot of different elements, they mixed trends with GABA, with mm -hmm. 90s, they played techno, they played hard mm -hmm. techno, mm -hmm. and suddenly there was, a, during Corona, really this movement to faster techno, right. which I really noticed, mm -hmm. um, that everyone was like, oh yeah, let's get a one of 140 BPM at least, mm -hmm. which was before Corona, not really the case yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh. And that's kind of interesting too because playing faster and faster when there's actually no party to go to. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is also the interesting thing um, how maybe, for example, the, the Gaba scene in the 90s came up. Um, it was extreme times, people were poor, they had no opportunities, right. and they wanted something extreme. Mm -hmm. So, what people in, during Corona time want, they maybe they want something more extreme to get like to let loose of the escape reality. Yes, exactly, right, right. exactly mm -hmm. to escape reality. Um, yeah. So hard times maybe make hard music. Right. That's true. That's a good point. So how's everybody feeling now? Are you hopeful for the future? Exhausted now with the pandemic? Um, optimistic still? I think it's it's depending. I mean, of course, we we try to do the best mm -hmm. during the hard times we had to go yeah, yeah. Um, with interlinked mm -hmm. in the case. So we hope, of course, we have to we have I hope for interlinked. Yes. And we are looking forward to the next weeks, mm -hmm. days, month, years. Uh -huh. We're excited of about what's yeah, going to happen. Definitely. But on the other side, privately. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's hard. It's, yeah, not, it's, hard. Not, it's not it's no great time. Yeah. You have to separate. Yeah, like I mean private it's it's really exhausting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think for everybody. Right. But um, on the other hand it gave us a good good option mm -hmm. to, to create something mm -hmm. and it gave us time to okay. create something. Right. And uh, what you have, what I have to ask uh, to add, sorry, is it fused a lot of Players together mm -hmm. in the scene. I mean, yes. everyone has Corona has created a situation where everyone has to has a common pain. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a common pain. So kind of not literally, but kind of everyone is on the same level. Mm -hmm. Now we have the chance to really talk to big players mm -hmm. as kind of an, on, on the same level because right. they have the same pain as, as we do. Right. Yeah. That those are chances we would never have gotten before the before yeah, yeah, COVID. Yeah. And it's with, with other other collaborations in the scene as well. Yeah. Lots of people are talking together that would have never talked. Before. They're accessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. So what's coming up next for Ravemore? Tell us about what you're working on now. There will be some some sick project with Voxnox. Okay. With Voxnox mm -hmm. together with Voxnox. Um, and much more, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, we have to think about the second episode mm -hmm. of Interlinked. Yeah, yeah. Which we are pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's some good light up in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I said, so much, so much opportunities, and and only forty five minutes of time. So right. 
we are super hyped about this. So we better do a lot of episodes. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping, I mean, of course, we're hoping for, you can always hope. Mm -hmm. You can always hope for something that happening this summer that's similar to a rave you are used to. So uh, maybe we will have the chance to, to really to, to launch Acrobat Field, mm -hmm. the supplement. We're hoping to have the chance. If it doesn't make sense, we can just we simply cannot launch it. it. It would be stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're hoping to do it to, to launch it as possible as soon as possible. Yeah. Those three big steps. That's great. Yeah. I love the VR. I think like you were saying, it's not a substitute, it's merely a new way to experience something. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what, what's next on that. And I think, you know, it's like also you can say, if you like techno, mm -hmm. if you like raves, if you like movies, right. if you are up for something new, just by interlinked. Mm -hmm. And you can have a, like a chill Sunday night mm -hmm. and experience some techno and like also like, yeah, some crazy stories. Mm -hmm. So that's what yeah. it's about. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Man. So hope we see everybody in VR and then also out on the dance floor again. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. both, both is important, I think. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, I, that's it, unless there's any other closing thoughts. Thank you guys for taking the Thank time. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I, I yeah. said that the fourth person of who's yeah. who did interlink with us, to okay. with us. Yeah. We wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Uh -huh. Shout out to our guy, Bowie. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, he could be he couldn't be here today, but all right, right. maybe on another one. Maybe the next Yes. Alright. Thank you guys. Thank you, great. Right? Yeah. Woo, woo. It's hot. It is hot. It is hot.